the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. First Timothy chapter 4. Let me apologize for the congestion tonight. We really apologize. Hallelujah. We also apologize for the impromptu change in the venue. First Timothy 4, verse 15. I want to start tonight giving us a very strong encouragement. Are we there? Please let's read together. If we can have it in Amplify, that would be great. One, two, read, everyone. that your progress will be evident to everybody. The Bible says, so let your light shine, not before angels, not before demons. Hallelujah. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, the fruits of your sacrifices in the Spirit. And as a result, praise your Heavenly Father in heaven. God is doing great things in this place and we honor him for what he's doing week after week. There is a building, there is a conformity. We are being molded into something. The Bible says it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But I want you to know that God is making men in this place. This is the way you father me I love the way you father me this is the way you father me I love the way this is the way you father me I love the way you father me this is the way you father me This is the way you father me. I love the way you father me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Teach us tonight, build us, make us mighty men. In the name of Jesus Christ. My first encouragement tonight is that, please listen never get familiar with what God is doing in this place when you become familiar with anything you commonize it and it stops blessing you when you become familiar with anything at all you lose the anointing you lose the grace you lose the efficacy in that thing I know that we've been coming here doing this again and again. Please, can you play strings? Years after years after years, we've been doing this thing. But there is something the Holy Spirit is doing. And it's important for us to study, study what He's doing in our lives. 
don't just get caught up many of us have incorporated this day in our activities and once it's friday we know that it's dedicated we're coming for koinonia and so on and so forth but i really want us to understand that god is doing something if we do not understand this it will be difficult to submit to the dealings and the teachings of the spirit these teachings are supposed is a programming is producing something out of our lives hallelujah god is making objects of praise out of our lives and although this is like a factory there is a making process if you stay on course not even you can stop what you will become there's an army rising up you're that army rising up there's an army rising up they'll break every chain break every chain Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, use me as your battle axe. I don't just want to waste my time listening and listening for nothing. Use me as your battle axe. The Bible says, Ye are my battle axe and my instruments of war. God is training us to wreck havoc in the kingdom of darkness concerning our lives and our destinies. Go ahead and pray. Use me as a financial battle axe, as an apostolic battle axe, as a prophetic battle axe. Let my edges be so sharpened, O oh God, that I will do mighty things for the kingdom. Let my generation bless the Lord that I was born. I submit to your dealings. I submit to your word. I allow it to transform my mind. I allow it to influence my decisions. There is one cry in my heart every time I prepare to come here. And that cry is that nothing and no one will stop what God is doing in our lives. You may not realize the extent of the revolution that is happening from this city and from this place and through our lives. But when God is done with us, then the world will know they will see an example of what God can do with men who are yielded. It may not look like it. The Bible says, I reckon, Romans 8:18, 8, that the sufferings of this present time, the constraints, the sacrifices you may have to pay, the, the resistance, the pain that you will have to go through, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear the sound of the new church rising. I can see the rising in the thousands. They're coming from afar, coming from afar. I can hear the sound of revival, and I know. That 
the hand of God is upon us. Hey, and I hear the sound of revival spreading all over, spreading all over. Oh, 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 us, O God, that which has been written in the volume of the book. Let our generation be salvaged from the bondage of corruption. We make ourselves available. Prune us, build us, forge us, O God. Make us mighty men of power. Make us men of wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I want to share something that I believe will change our lives forever. And I want us to please pay attention. See, when when you understand the ways of God, you will love God more. When you understand the principles of the kingdom and you see how that your life becomes predictable. Hallelujah. Then you will know that no power in existence can really tie down your destiny. It doesn't matter what the disadvantage has been. Just stay. There is a force. The Bible says how forcible are right words. There is a force that no power, not your background, not your mistakes, not your limitations can resist. Hallelujah. In one minute, I'd like you to just pray, just this one prayer and say, Lord, help me to be attentive tonight. I throw away familiarity. I embrace your word with the heart of a child. See Baba Balabaus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Lord laid this message tonight, I was very excited because I know that this message tonight will apply to almost everyone, if not everyone. God has been teaching us all through this month of July strategies how to come into the realm of greatness, influence, to contend for that relevance. And I pray that these words that we receive will not stand against us in the days to come. That 10 years from now you will not stand and still be a failure and watch those who listen to what they are listening now. The same thing you are hearing Many of our parents ignored opportunities like that. They kept laughing and mocking at those who were serious. And look at the heritage many of them have passed on to us right now. Suffering, pain, trouble, curses, yokes. They had every opportunity that every great man has today. But like many of us are doing, they did not pay attention. Being distracted by all kinds of things. But tonight I pray. That no matter how hardened your heart is, that for once, you will love your destiny enough to pay attention. The beautiful thing about life is no one will pay your price for you. No matter how stubborn you are, no matter how hardened you are, you can argue today, you can laugh and scorn at what God is doing. 
but the day of reckoning will come. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. This is a, this is a bailout. It's, it's an exemption program. God is exempting many of us from so many things. Hallelujah. Shine a bani she ne a one ke su cha cha. Thank you for your love. We are not better than those who are going around in ignorance, confused. Listen, with what you know now, I like you to imagine the way your life would have been without the knowledge you have now. Did you know that there are many people just like you used to be? And they are equally confident, believing that there is a great destiny waiting for them. Hallelujah. But we thank God for His grace. Galatians 6 verse 9. I want to share something very powerful. Two people please. Mighty revelation tonight. Any two people? Just two gentlemen. Come, sir. Thank you. Please stand here. Any other person? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we have been taught the revelation of the things that God desires to do in our lives. Please follow me. We have been taught that God has an agenda and that he seeks to make us ambassadors. That there is a prophetic destiny for everyone. Say after me, I have a prophetic destiny. Say it, I have a prophetic destiny. And this is a revelation of the prophecy over our lives. Hallelujah. That there is something God wants to do. There is something God wants to make out of us. There is a debt that we owe our generation that we must pay in our lifetime. And that God is trusting us. Hallelujah. So this is prophecy. And on the other side, we have the manifestation and the fulfillment of this prophecy. Are you following me tonight? When we begin to walk in the experience of that which has been spoken concerning us. So many of us have been taught what it is that God has written and said concerning you and your life and family and destiny and through the eyes of prophecy we can see that which God is going to do we have in our minds a picture of the kind of destiny but what I want to teach tonight is how to manage the seasons between prophecy and their manifestation this is the greatest in my opinion the greatest revelation that you need to cap up these teachings on influence and greatness and the kingdom because it is through this journey brothers and sisters that many fall by the wayside are you getting my point it is through this journey that many never make it there there is it's like a marathon so many people hundreds of people standing with all of their their athlete apparels but in the final analysis at the end only maybe less than one or two or three percent of those people ever arrive at the finish line and i want us to finish strong hallelujah many of us are at this season of our lives and we've been praying fasting and say lord explain to me what meaneth these things what is the mystery behind the things that are happening in my life what season am i in please listen tonight because god is about to speak to you galatians 6 verse 9 please read everybody
One more time. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in what? Hold on. In what? There is a timing in the spirit called due season. For in due season, not any time, do not be weary in well doing. I'm building up from what I shared last week. For in due season, we will reap. But there is a condition. What is the condition? If we, that means, if we faint, what will happen? Although the due season will come, but we will not reap. Hallelujah. So there are two things there. There is a due season and there is a call for endurance. Call for strength. Call for continuity. Hallelujah. One of the most disturbing aspects of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom is the concept of timings and seasons. There are very few messages in the body of Christ that attempt to address the issue of divine timings and the seasons of men's life. Yet the Bible talks a lot about the things that happen under the sun. And that anything under the sun is governed by times and seasons. Say after me, times and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 gives us an extensive description of the revelation and the power of times and seasons and how that these things hold the key to our manifestation in this earth, in this realm. And that means if we do not understand spiritual timings, if we do not understand seasons, we may be equipped with the principles but we will faint because we do not realize that God is working even at those times and seasons. So I want to teach on certain things that will bless us tonight. The Bible says for us not to be weary in well doing. Hallelujah. It said for in due season we will reap. Last week I began to talk about how that the Bible gives us a mystery. That time and chance happen to them. You remember that teaching? Hallelujah. And so that our, our, our part of the equation is not to sit down and keep waiting for the time. The Bible already gives us a guarantee that time and chance will happen to everyone. So rather than sitting down and waiting, where will my turn come? We spend the time doing what? Sharpening our abilities. So that when that time comes, we will be ushered into the realm of greatness never to come out again. If you believe it, say Amen. Let me talk about two concepts and then we'll build. Number one, write this word down. Waiting. W-A-I-T-I-N-G. Waiting. One word that gets believers scared in the kingdom. Many people have preached all kinds of messages, but tonight I want us to examine these concepts. I do my best by the leadership of the Spirit to make sure that we leave no stone unturned as far as the journey to our destiny and our success is concerned. Waiting. One of the hardest things that can happen to a believer is to enter a season of waiting. It can be so frustrating. It can be so painful that it will take the ability and the strength of the spirit for you to survive that season. Please take note of what I'm sharing. No matter how anointed you are, no matter how great you are, if there is a prophecy upon your life, hear me, between that prophecy and the manifestation of that prophecy, a time will come in your life when you will step into this season of waiting and it's important i teach you how it works in the kingdom otherwise when you enter that season you may be so confused and you will abort destiny not knowing what is happening behind the scenes is somebody getting blessed already because many of us right now are in this phase as i speak right now there are individuals who are 
at these periods of their life and truly they are confused because this season rattles your convictions everything you have believed comes under the test when you come to this season your ideologies your beliefs your prayer life your dexterity in the spirit your endurance everything you have ever acquired through the world will come on that test and if you cannot stand that test brothers and sisters you may stand from here and see canaan but you may never enter it the fact that you have seen the vision the fact that you have had the dream is no guarantee the fact that god spoke to you is no guarantee that you will arrive there is someone hearing what i'm saying you saw yourself a mighty evangelist you saw yourself a mighty apostle in your dreams you see crusades you see a lot of things in your dreams you have seen that you are a financial apostle you've seen yourself doing mighty things for the kingdom i want to announce to you tonight that between the prophecy and its manifestation are stages and principles and one of those stages is called the period of waiting and if you do not understand this brothers and sisters you may never arrive there proverbs 13 verse 12 proverbs 13 verse 12 let's hurry up tonight open your heart hallelujah now the bible explains to us you see look up please i've spent my life not just studying on the kingdom but studying about man because i'm a man and i i like to know what what my the components of my 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 creation my build up i like to know what my strengths are not as a my personality but the general man i like to know who man is what are his limitations what are his predicaments what are the vulnerabilities that can befall man this revelation helps me to know where to lean on god more hallelujah and here and there i have found certain inevitable weaknesses that are fabricated in man and it would take us understanding those limitations and leaning on the strength of god to supplement for our inadequacies at that time otherwise we will not last one of it is this simple scripture that many of us have read again and again one to read hope deferred makes what when you postpone hope when expectations are not met the bible says it can affect your spirit man are you reading it here the word heart there's the same word spirit when you hope for certain things by our natural design we love winning we love achieving we love accomplishing things are you getting my point we love seeing a sign of progress in our lives is someone getting what I'm, I'm, I'm saying tonight? The Bible says, when that hope that we have, that drives us into destiny, when those expectations that we have are not achieved, when it is deferred, that means when it is postponed, the Bible says it has an effect, not just in your physical body. It does not just create fatigue in your physical body it affects even your spirit man he said but when desire cometh it is a tree of life when you achieve your goals and you hold on to it there is the joy that fulfillment and accomplishment brings in every man hallelujah that means when the waiting period between your prophecy and its manifestation gets too long if you do not understand the technology and the provision that has been made in the spirit to carry you through that process you may never arrive there are you getting what i'm saying although anointed although born again the bible tells us that there is a 
there is an inadequacy that is in man that man does not have the, the ability to endure to suffer long forever that means a time comes in the equation of your life when your patience gets stretched out no matter how good and godly you are that means there must be a technology in the spirit that is able to hold you and take you to the place of destiny say amen now there are two dimensions to waiting and i want us to look at it number one is that waiting so that we don't confuse ourselves here waiting can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in christ we must get this it's very important waiting can be a demonic strategy please write it it can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in christ i must balance this straight up so that many of us do not sit down and allow the devil delay our destinies forever and then get convinced because if the word of god is not rightly divided the devil can use that it is written and convince many of us now who should be preparing for miracle service next week and say lord an end comes to this there are certain periods of waiting that are not defined they are not initiated by god at all are you getting my point now they are strategies from the kingdom of darkness to delay and limit us from entering our prophetic destiny that kind of waiting is called delay write it down the name given to that kind of waiting is delay delay satan's strategy to limit you and hinder you and stop you paul said once and again i desire to come to you but satan hindered us satan can hinder men then number two the second dimension is that delay can be a divine orchestration please get this you must get this that there are two dimensions to look at waiting in the kingdom all of our teaching is within the context of the kingdom that there is a waiting process and period that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to limit us and the name given to it is delay but that there is a waiting period there are these seasons that are divine orchestrations lamentations 3 25 can we look at it very quickly is someone getting blessed already thank you jesus sorry guys you soon go and sit down okay just go just go just go bless you so you can be writing it's very important that you write lamentations 3 25 are we there everyone please look up and read before you continue writing one to read the lord is good unto them that do what not wait on him wait for him wait for him it's a very difficult thing to wait very very difficult and this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process write it in the kingdom it's called process process so there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you and you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from god or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness hallelujah process very important you will come to this period of your life whether you pray for it or not is part of the things that you will find and i'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season 
let me give you one example remember the nation of israel hallelujah they came out there was a prophecy given to moses even moses their leader did not enter the promised land look up did you know that god never told moses he was going to die on the way is that true the prophecy that was given to moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey god never told him somebody will take out the button but between egypt brothers and sisters and canaan only two people from that generation were able to make it only two people they all had the prophecy they rejoiced they joined moses after the the, the parting of the red sea to sing i will sing unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and his rider because it had not stretched their patience too much but they came to a point look at all the things they did in the wilderness because they did not understand this operation and listen if you do not learn the lesson you will do the same thing it's easy to talk about them thank you jesus christ a few thoughts about waiting that i want you to note number one in the kingdom please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom in the kingdom waiting is not the absence of progress in the kingdom waiting is not the absence of progress for many of us our concept of waiting is to stand still known to be motionless but that's not the way it works in the kingdom when you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom it does not mean absence of progress it also does not mean absence of advancement that when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot not making progress to you you think you are in one spot because there's no physical evidence to measure your advancement but i'm telling you right now that behind the scene there is a lot of advancement taking place number two waiting in the kingdom is not necessarily delay it is the process of preparation i'm taking our time to read it because i don't want us to miss it you'll notice in the last few weeks i've been teaching very carefully reading almost directly from my notebook here because i don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people i want them to follow on thoroughly waiting is not necessarily delay it is the process of preparation number three look up i want to explain something now about waiting one of the biggest things i've seen in the lives of people and please listen god is about to minister directly to us now is that because we have expectations for something great about our life we postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it are you getting my point to the future so that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive and then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period are you getting my point but the bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy i want to show you why a lot of people never arrive during the waiting process one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy i'll give you an example a brother wants to get married or a lady wants to get married god has told you you will get married is that true and you pass all the joy and say on that glorious day when i wear my suit you will see the dance i've never danced before i would dance david's dance and laugh but between now and that point you will see the lady looking frowny angry at everybody 
why why is god delaying me and so we kill our joy are you getting what i'm saying and we wait and we pack up everything and we keep pushing the joy to the future and we never get blessed with the moment that expectation kills our joy we cry day and night oh god when will i become a millionaire i'm seeing it let me just enter this thing and you see joyless believers angry and offended at god note this tonight that waiting should never postpone your joy you can be joyful while waiting never wait until you arrive your joy gets complete when you arrive but that joy should start and go with you all the way because the bible says the joy of the lord is the strength that you will need there is a difference between joy and happiness if i give you one million now there is every reason to be happy that's not joy hallelujah but joy is of the holy ghost is the strength and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of god's integrity so when there is no physical evidence you are joyful he said rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice look up please how many of us have killed our joy there are so many people you see a lady of 20 years looking like 50 why say i'm not in a relationship god spoke to me am i the worst person in the world no joy you stand outside tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move 90 percent of people are joyless people they get up in the morning there's no sense of joy and merriment you ask them why and they give you all kinds of legitimate reason and they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful and they never arrive at their destinations is god speaking to someone tonight that's what changed our parents many of them when they got married like us they were happy people eventually their expectations they expected that when the first child is five years they would have been millionaires established in their dream jobs having their own homes unfortunately they had wishes but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen so 15 years down the line they are still crying for rent there's nothing there and you find your father old and angry now don't insult him it's the frustration the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded every new year people are happy do you know why they are happy because it makes them forget about the previous year and for the first one week they dance many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving by february everybody is angry oh lord not again will this year pass without the child coming oh lord so this is how the husband will not come this is how my admission will not come again and then our joy the devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy and by the middle of the year everyone is already frustrated and cast out spiritually you must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit to make sure that part of the things that suffer of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period your joy should not be one of them are you getting what i'm saying because your joy will culminate to your strength god is speaking to someone tonight waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing when you wait in the kingdom when you follow through that period you are acknowledging that god works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how god makes men great you are everything everything is you you are everything 
Waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing. Everybody say divine timing. Say after me, there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest. Say one more time, there is a season and a timing. There is a season of showing forth. There is a season of manifestation. There is a season of display. Yes. You must recognize that there is a season. Brothers and sisters, it's called due season. Everyone say due season. Due season. The second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build is the word impatience. Write it down. impatience what is impatience patience that has been exhausted patience that has been exhausted tonight I speak like prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry there is a technology that will refill it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, impatience is deadly and is dangerous to your destiny. Write it down and underline it. Impatience is deadly. I, I think that's one of the greatest keys in my opinion. One of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy Africans, Nigerians and young people in general. Impatience. Impatience. What does it mean to be impatient? Impatience means getting ahead of God. Getting ahead of God. That's what it means to be impatient. You run ahead of God. You run ahead of his timing for your life. Impatience is a dangerous thing. God is speaking to us tonight. Because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience there are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience hallelujah very very important you are a young lady you are just 21 you want to kill yourself if I don't marry by 2014 let it not be that I'm a Christian and you are yoking yourself you fasted for 2 weeks which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause but at 21, there's all kinds of pressure and you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him. Just write the scripture. We may not read it for time's sake. I want to hurry up and I want us to finish very fast. In Genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4. Well, let's just, let's just look at it very quickly. Genesis 16, 1 to 4. That man, Abraham, God had spoken to him. Now it was taking too long. The result was not coming. And the Bible says in the 16th chapter, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. So this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of God that he would be the father of all nations. And she had a what? Please read. And she had what? And that handmaid was an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. 
I want to show you the danger of impatience. Every time impatience begins to grow in your life, you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny. Because very soon, there will be something around you that can be an option. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people have missed out on God's best for them because they could not wait. Two days to enter God's best. We made all kinds of decisions in our lives. Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? Are you getting my point now? Impatience will create pictures around your life. If by August a godly brother does not come, God is my witness. I will go anywhere. Even if it's my village and carry anybody. The Bible says, Sarah told Abraham, I'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels. And Sarah said, okay, this is a handmaid. She's younger than me. She can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? The fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action get ready because an ishmael will be born you are everything everything is you you are everything everything is you look at verse 11 11 and 12 let's see the tragedy of this union the product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord. To wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, listen, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham, was that the blessing you were told? He said, this union will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That means this troubler will be everywhere. Till today, the world has not recovered from the union less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience jeopardize the generation who is about to jeopardize his destiny here There's, there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience is someone getting blessed tonight the nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 32 when they came out of Egypt, Moses went upon the mountain for 40 days. Look at me. It was a waiting period. Is that true? They didn't see any progress. Whereas Moses was on the mountain intercussing with God. So something was happening that they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening. Brothers and sisters, it looks like your life has been stagnant for years. You think you are stagnant, but if God should open your eyes, 
to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit. God is really ministering to someone tonight. It's not the way you have been looking at it. It's not the way you have been looking at it. Physically, you have not been in school for three years. But there is a progression. The Lord has been doing something. The job did not come. Five years after graduation, you are still struggling. And you believe you are like every other jobless person. Is that true? There is an investment of the Spirit in you. Only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom. The nation of Israel could not wait. And what did they tell Aaron? Let's look at that verse. Exodus 32. Very quickly. Is someone getting blessed? Impatience can jeopardize your destiny. You can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through. But never ever be able to cut out of your life. Hallelujah. And they told Aaron, they said, Moses is wasting our time. We don't even know whether he's dead or not. Please, we brought gold out of the temple. We remember that while we were slaves, we saw the Egyptians worshipping a god of gold. And it was the god that brought them out. Oh yeah, Aaron, come and build us this idol. Let's celebrate this idol. We can't wait. If there is God in heaven, why will he keep us in the wilderness for for this long 40 days we didn't see Moses he didn't tell us anything and we are waiting let us build an idol and while God was with Moses advocating for the same people they were destroying their own destiny by themselves and Aaron said unto them break off the golden earrings they forced Aaron they forced Aaron which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. Verse 3. And all the people took the golden earrings. They were so desperate to come out of that season. They say, is it not earring? Take. Oh yeah, all the women remove your earrings. Yes, we need to carve out very fast. Never find yourself trying to help God in a process that is exclusively within his power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness many of us try to help god Uzzah tried to hold the ark he died yet the ark never fell let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue and he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool after he made it into what a molten calf and they said this be thy god O israel which brought thee out of the land so after two years the child doesn't come after praying and praying oh we trust god and then somebody comes to say there's one man who it's not like i'm suggesting that you should go there me my heart it's me praise god the man can pray. It's not like a habali. It's not exactly. It's not a pastor. It's not a habali. But he used to help people. He said, "Really? Two years ago, when they told you, say, no, 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 no. I'm a child of God. Two years later, you are almost gassed out. And you say, eh, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know, men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you are talking, and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he? Who has he given uh, a child to? Uh, let's be careful with all these people. Hallelujah. I counsel people and I am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of God dwindles over their life just a little. I'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week. 
she said she believes that there are instructions I will give her for her marriage. I said, my dear, there's no instruction. I'm, I'm spending my life for hours shouting on Friday. Go and listen to Relationship and Family Life Series Part 1, 2, 3. The next day, they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open. You see, all these things is, is, is in innocence, but it's an act of impatience. Impatience will make you hear what God did not say. Impatience will create a road that was not of God. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship you say, please, was I dreaming? Who did I say yes to? The guy will say, sweetheart, you say, me. I said yes to you. The guy say, you said yes. Now what is all this again? And ladies, please be warned. I don't know why I, as I'm talking, I'm coming into all this relationship thing. Maybe God is speaking to some people through it. Hallelujah. Ladies, don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say, answer him now, you said it's none of your business. If it's not you, they ask advice when you are invited. Otherwise, stay away and pray. Many of us just come and say, this guy is my personal person. I know him. I said you'll be in the relationship. And many people jeopardize their destinies. Is he born again? He's a nice person. Does he love the word of God? He's okay. He doesn't smoke. He, he used to smoke and drink before, but Abba, in the last one year, even him, he told me. He doesn't lie to me, honestly. If he, you Abba, me, he loves me too much to lie. Until the day he pounds your face when Abel resurrects and you find out that, that Cain, Cain, sorry, Cain is alive and active. And that guy beats the living daylight out of you. Or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest. And he says, so what? I'm a man. You said you're a Christian. You will not sleep with me. I come. You are still my wife. But I have to find something to be doing before we get married. Impatience. Don't just laugh. I hope you are getting the message. It's a very serious message. Impatience brought the world under under all kinds of terrible things. Someone getting blessed. Let's hurry up. During the waiting period, certain things usually happen. And I want you to take note of them. Number one is that you have the tendency to get weary. Especially when you have obeyed every principle you know. And there is no obvious change. Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that. And they say, sir, I have been I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful. I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, the, the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been working according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request. Miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two. Your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in. Your joy like I said earlier on begins to fade. Number three impatience sets in i'm giving you to it i'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand that these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting the tendencies the vulnerabilities number four which is the most dangerous part is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which god has given you options options Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. 
when jesus met peter look at me when jesus met peter i told him come follow me i will make you a fisher of men is that true but when jesus died just for three days three days peter did not see jesus for three days his patience could not pass 72 hours and in john 21 he said oh boy i go a fishing and the disciples say we go with you in other words let's go back to a, an option that we know something about and when jesus saw him in chapter 15 thereabout he said lovest thou me more than this how many of us have given god options god told you you are going to be a great man of god but he said be patient you were not patient now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you only you and your best friend who is tired he wants to leave it's just that he doesn't know what to do with you only two of you every evening only two of the person is tired because although you are genuinely called but you cannot wait for timings and seasons hallelujah i remember one one pastor gentleman years ago that guy is still struggling till today and if he doesn't adjust he may still be struggling till only god knows when i remember his fellowship years ago appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher it was such an embarrassment to his personality and he said god did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher if they cannot honor the grace of god upon his life and give him something honorable by honorable he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it see that many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit will come there because we have given ourselves options options hallelujah god gave you signs he gave you symbols he gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will you have not seen them the equation has not lined up if god tells you something 80 percent is still not god you must wait until it looks like god it's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is god whereas it is not of god and so somebody comes and says will you like to be a pastor in our church and they say thank you jesus i knew it you people are under utilizing my anointing anytime god did not send you be sure that you will not see his hand see let me tell you this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of god and they keep struggling until the season comes where god catches up with them and they call it breakthrough then they make another mistake again and they wait why don't you walk with god it's dangerous to walk ahead of god hallelujah impatience some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience i must build a house this year i must build a house this year because my colleagues have built houses me too i must build a house i must buy three cars this year one for me one for my wife and one for the children and some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience daddy do it you can make it i believe in you and now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure because there is no impatience there, there's no patience sorry hallelujah some of us are here if you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today get set to walk naked tomorrow are you hearing what i'm saying I must buy a suit of hundred thousand you carry everything god has blessed you with now home and abroad you bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life whereas that money came to buy books is someone getting blessed and then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse hallelujah we have 15 year old millionaires 20 year old millionaires so everybody just says I, I must make it in this nigeria if there is a cake i must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my cake comes to me and you know there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust kill a 
every enemy that is covering your cake, your portion of the cake. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here. Sister, your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient. You said, all my colleagues are in relationships. And one guy just came, one of the lonely one among the friends. Say, okay, I'm doing too. And look, from that day till now, it's been four or five years of hell on earth. Because you attach yourself to Hagar. And Ishmael is the product. Tonight, God is delivering someone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life. Listen, let me tell you. I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when a few years ago, I would be invited to go and minister. Then there was no protocol, no nothing. And I would prepare fast and pray, right? And go and minister. And at the end of it, the people would not even say, Oh, there is an honorarium who want to appreciate you. And I mean, I will fast for days as if I'm preaching in an international conference somewhere. And then I will go and sometimes it's when I arrive that they will push people in front. Praise God. And say there is a place. And I remember, I will never forget, two pastors, they came and met me. They said, man of God, the kind of anointing you have, there are some bishops that do not even have you. Why are you underutilizing this anointing? Many of us will hear that thing and say it's true. It's true. I'll never forget through the rain, through the sun, through whatever. I will risk myself, pay my own transport and get there. I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW. It was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration. I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Jankfa had one nice loafers. His brother gave him. He will give me the loafers. The only thing I had was maybe socks or something. You are laughing. Don't be carried away by suits and all these things. Because many of... See, the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place. They make it look easy. As if it just happened by one prophetic word. And many of us are already running. You are already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas. You better wake up. The journey is still far. In Jesus' name. It's not that I'm not prophesying that... <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus' name, forgive me. Hallelujah. You must learn to wait. You must learn to wait. And I will show you why. We're going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom. I'll never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000. I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion, that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted they would have list of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they will find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they will run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference, they will invite me and I will go to prayer. I will say, Lord, and the Lord will say, go. It looked like I was a fool. But one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. 
you've not been effective yet you're already dreaming in the name of jesus in two months i'll be riding a jaguar i'll be you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom tame your lust and line it up with the seasons of the spirit there is a difference between speed and foolishness are you getting what i'm saying many people step into seasons that is not god that li let's listen if you force a door to open whether it's god that opened it or not it will open but the trouble is when they ask you who sent you you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone hallelujah so what do you do as you await your due season this is the crux of this teaching tonight what do you do when your due season is yet to appear when that waiting period gets so long lord will the child come will the breakthrough come when will you change my story every time i go to pray you show me a great destiny you told me a day will come i will minister before thousands i will be an international evangelist you are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry but as it is i have not yet seen it number one i'm giving you the formula brothers and sisters if you keep this secret you will survive the process between prophecy and manifestation you will find out that while men are falling by the wayside there will be a strength that will carry you number one during your waiting period you should do the following recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season it comforts you to know that your wait is not forever because God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8. Won't turn there. Tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun. The Bible says... John remained in the wilderness until his what? Season of appearance. Everyone prophesy to yourself. My season of appearance is coming. Prophesy it. My season of appearance is coming. Can you turn it into a prayer in one minute? I may not look like it now. But my God, there is a making. And my season of appearance will come. I have a portion among the great and the hand of God will bring me there I will stay through I may not be able to preach now I may not have money in my pocket now but there is a due season it has been written by prophecy not the witches in my village can stop it no power in existence and I choose to wait I choose to wait there is a due season when I will drive the cars. There is a due season when men will run after me with jobs. There is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage. There is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building. Oh yes, time and chance happen to them all my turn is coming i know this for sure a day will come i will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire a day will come that wedding ring will enter my hand too but meanwhile i wait a day will come i will travel abroad as though i'm walking from my house and going outside i will enter the plane a day will come I will wear the convocation gown. A day will come. I will finally pass the job. There is a due season. The child will come. Barrenness does not last forever. 
prophesy in one minute shake away unbelief shake away impatience a day will come I will have peace with my husband I know it's a demonic challenge there are ancestral powers causing this family problem but there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family I know but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded I am persuaded I may not see the wind I may not see the cloud it does not look like it will rain but the hand of Jehovah that hand that regulates times and seasons my turn will come I will be on television my turn will come the healing anointing will finally work my time will come when my prophecy will appear it's called my season of appearing it's called my season of appearing hallelujah recognize that everything under the sun works by timing so when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for listen i cannot tell you god gave me an instruction and god told me he said that he would use koinonia messages like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations and god specifically said we should never not in this season of ministry begin to sell tapes and do all of that i cannot tell you how many people have called to say man of god you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira i said i appreciate your interest but there is a season are you hearing what i'm saying so many people have spoken to me come and open koinonia branch in abuja come and open in lagos come and do this come and do that i told you in 2006 after our crusade in Jos, it was so powerful the pfn said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry they were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium i went to god and god said you would die that was exactly what i told them that god said i would die listen many men of god today do you know why ministry is killing them although god called them they have opened other seasons for themselves god never spoke to them to start a church they started a church now they are wondering no money no nothing no grace there are many people god told them you are an evangelist they said i need a base so that i will have money as though god cannot finance his work are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble never do anything without asking god even if god said yes yesterday ask him today again three days for us to start koinonia i went on a retreat three days i went on a retreat and i said lord it's not that i'm doubting you but i want to confirm again for adventure it was my flesh that minister to me hallelujah when you see what the hand of god is upon even if you are a critic you will know that there is god in what is happening hallelujah what season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience i know you are anointed mog who asked you to start a healing ministry you started gathering sick people and telling all of them write what is wrong with you and lift it up you want to become a great man everybody you laid hands on nobody was healed the people are angry they are planning to beat you by the next healing service you better go back to god and ask questions hallelujah many people have produced albums prematurely they produce five albums not even their immediate environment no they they traveled abroad took the albums it didn't sell because the season see i taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that god is with you 
Hallelujah. Recognize that there is a due season. Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for 3 years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. It's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force. The word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. Calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? After crossing the Red Sea, while you are rejoicing, thinking that's all, you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you. Listen. The second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. It's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives. And we focus on the things that he has not done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, this house is too small. We are tired. We need a change. Remember when you were managing with one room. And that one room it was your friend that gave you. Although God has told you you are going to a new house, but in the interim, when impatience wants to set in, when weariness wants to set in, count the faithfulness of God. Where is the God that gave me a lion? Where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 3.1. But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while, I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people and and then I, I pray for people once in a while and I am humble at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah I have spoken to so many HIV patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy. I remember speaking with one of the women very recently. And this woman was rejoicing. She said, I now have a ministry. And it was, she did not even come for the counseling for healing. She had so conquered it that for her to live is Christ. 
and to die is gain. She was focusing on something else. Yet there is somebody shouting and arguing. If the husband does not come in two months, Lord, if I backslide, let it be that it's your fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who have been diagnosed. Oh, you need to go to the hospital, brothers and sisters, and see people whose legs they've cut, they amputated the legs. And then you keep seeing them singing. His faithfulness is forevermore. A pretty lady who is not married already, but she had an accident and one eye is gone. Are you getting my point? And she says, yes, Lord, I thank you. I'm alive. If I can do nothing, I can give God praise. Whereas, a house close to that same street where the accident occurred, there is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at God. We are tired of eating spaghetti in this house. My father only pays school fees. Shame on him. At his age, he cannot even give me 5,000. My father is giving me 1,000. You wait and see the one that it was with box and prophecy. They sent them from the village to come to Zaria. One heavy echo like and prophecy. May God be with you. And he came and stopped at North Gate. Not having one naira. Yet they are in 300 level. When you see people worshipping Koinonia. Everyone knows the story. We can wear suits and fake it. But everyone knows where the shoe is hurting. So don't let anybody stop your praise. When it's time to worship God. They gave birth to them in a nice maternity ward. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. You are saying, Lord, I need a boy. I need a boy. I'm tired of three girls. On the other side, a woman is saying, Lord, anything, anything, boy or girl, whatever, I am grateful. Just one. I don't need two. I just need a consolation. That I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering what will my tomorrow be me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die people challenge me i am happy but god has done too much in my life i will be the most ungrateful person in my life if i ever try to trivialize what god has done sister you are always complaining but you forgot you are beautiful there was there about beauty oh may god change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. Come, see, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease. Is sin before God. Refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done. Shine on me Your grace Your grace I'm nothing without you It's grace Your grace Shine on me Hallelujah You are there complaining Oh God, so I'm going to graduate with a pass. You wouldn't have given me the admission. Really? Really? You wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a C, not an E, a C, because
because of the nature of their program. Hallelujah. And they left school and went, and went to learn handwork and they are still grateful to God. Hallelujah. Can we take two minutes to count our blessings? Go ahead and do it. Just in two minutes and we'll continue. Think of when you were nothing, brothers and sisters. Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, we're nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor. Remember when we used to sit on the floor. Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate and you are still complaining. How many graduates? does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Arm robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years. That God is able God who sustained my mother without salary, she trained me to school. Where is that God? Where is the God that delivered you? When the doctors concluded about you, when that breast lump grew up, when 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 that when your hair was your hair was falling, where is that God that helped you? Man leke pradaba. Some of our parents were sacked and God gave them better jobs. Have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God? Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, nothing will stop me from becoming what He has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never never become a victim of impatience. Let's hurry up. Number three. What to do while you wait for your due season? Employ the weapon of praise. Hiya. Many people do not know that praise is a weapon. Employ when, when you count your blessings, then you balance it up with praise. 
and see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17. And let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, this is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up. The fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines. But at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail. And the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of what? The God that will bring that salvation. I will rejoice. Although nothing may seem to work. Some of you as you go back right now to your homes. The truth is that there is nothing to eat this night. Yet I will rejoice. I remember times in my life. I've told you when I will buy bread. And cut the bread. And put granite. Huh? And close it. And give thanks to the God of Israel. Because I knew that what was in me. Was greater than the restaurant. Greater than whatever. Can you sing the song he's played now Sam? What does the song say? Let's even understand the meaning of the song. So that we know we are singing. Evil people. What does he say? Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Yeah? Thank you. For what? Thank you, Daddy. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, Papa. Oh, yeah. One more time. Lift your hands and tell the God of your salvation, thank you. Psalms 138, very quickly. Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell. And let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight. And that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods all the gods that want me to be weary he said i will praise you before the gods i will sing praises that means i will look at all of these options and i will dance before god and say it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child the weapon of praise the weapon of praise let me hurry up because i want us to take at least five or ten minutes Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. 
is the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change, switch, have the mindset, develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an armed robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. Make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come you will do the real one. For sure. begin to act like your future when joseph joseph knew he had seen it in the spirit seen it in the dream that a day will come he will stand the sun representing his father the moon representing his mother and 11 stars will bow to him but then his life was opposite what his destiny was saying they threw him in the well and he composed himself he said i'm a leader I will learn the language of royalty. Listen, when they sold him for the equivalent of about $13 or so, that's the equivalent today. $13, you sell a human being. Were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away? But Joseph said, no problem. There's one song we used to sing before. You can take my coat. You cannot touch my destiny. We used to sing and jump with it during missions. Then in FCS, that you can take my coat, you cannot touch my destiny. Should I teach you? One minute. One, two, sing. You can take my coat, you cannot touch my destiny. They can take your coat, they can lie against you, they can scandalize you. That's taking your coat, but it will not touch your destiny. They can say you will never make it. No problem. That's taking your coat. It doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her. Whatever men do to impede your progress, they are taking your coat. But they can take your coat. It cannot touch your destiny. See, this must be your contemplations in the secret place. The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, it would have killed you. So God says, hold on. 
Just keep being faithful with the hundred thousand. Oh God, but my colleagues have one million. Say, no, nope, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beds were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was strict. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband because he walked like royalty. Other slaves were moving this over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the Bible is and it came to pass. Everybody say and it came to pass. Powerful scripture. It never comes to stay. And it came to pass. You hear the Bible say it again. On the fifth day of this month and that and that and the word of the Lord came to pass. Hallelujah. How many of you are behaving like your future already? Don't raise your hand. Some of you are still behaving like your past. Because in the future, you will be too great to keep bitterness. But you are still keeping bitterness. Right from secondary school. Now you've met with the lady in university and you say, even till we die, you are still holding on to your past. You are prolonging your arrival. Because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified. Hallelujah. Your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future. Your preparation is your report card. You're diligent at this level. Number five. Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through tithing. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced. When he was in the prison, Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. Said no problem. The truth will come out. Because you can see, look at me. You become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics. Are you getting me? You become too cheap. You make yourself too cheap. There are many of us who learn this now. Learn this now. It is easier to become great than to remain great. Look at me. Come, my sister. Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all this money? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV. 2014. Limited edition. And she comes with it. 
Do you know at once, all of a sudden, you will find fault with her hair. You will find fault with what she's wearing. Is it this place they put watch or here? You know why? Listen. People's progress, often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness. It is a natural thing. You must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. Listen. Hold on. You were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, eh, Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shedrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. You are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor or one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. Say, if dropping the money of the institution, it's all that. Get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate. Because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time trying to respond to critics. You say, hey, you have started palming your hair. You want all the koinonia guys to see you, no problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. And truly they will see you. And marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. The light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. Seven times as bright When Yahweh binds up the wounds of this world He heals all the bruises inflicted by This is your past now Hallelujah You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost The old people didn't used to sing They'll just keep chewing their mouth The moment you say heal all the wounds Inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, He seduces problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. 
Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problem distinguishes you. Sovereign problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people. I remember when I was marking the exams of the 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 first set of the, the students the school of ministry my goodness those guys were trained under quite some harsh condition they had like six months of strike and all of that for a four month program they spent close to a year when I was marking their exams I was even afraid I said these guys may not do well I was shocked I tell you some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet and it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you will still form it. And I learned once again. Brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearing? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you 1 million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best student. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor and he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very important. We are going to do two things very quickly. In the next five minutes, please, I want everybody to participate in this. We are going to enter such a realm of prophetic worship. We are just going to thank God for the season that he has even brought us. Thank him for the things. Please worship him. Prepare yourselves. Thank him for the things that he has done. And thank him for what he's going to I don't know how you are going to worship God. And praise God tonight. And then after that. We will pray and prophesy. And receive grace from God. This message you are hearing. You will play it again and again in the future when you sit on the throne of greatness and you will cry because you will thank God. Rise up on your feet, everyone.
Start this prayer session with a dangerous prophecy about your destiny. I don't know what the devil has spoken to you. I don't know what options you are about to take. But right now, lift your voice and begin to speak. And say, I'm not giving up. My God is alive. Go ahead. Pray. No way. No giving up. The prophet is still above my head. There's no giving up. I may fail, but I will rise again. There's no giving up. The hand of God is upon me. I'm an object of praise. Oh, protect generation waiting for me there's no turning back i may cry but there's no turning back i may weep but there's no turning back there is an anointing upon me there is a prophecy upon my life
remain in the wilderness. The day of your announcing is coming. Come on, pray. Pray, Koinonia. Make investment for your destiny. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. No compromise. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we'll round up. The next prayer point is that you're going to cry for grace. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, if because of the fierceness of the season of waiting, you now say I will marry any man. I will take any job. Okay, I will go to the harbor list. I will ask God for forgiveness later on. I will sleep with the boss. Let me just get the work. I like you to shout no way. Shout it no way. Listen. The three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, we are not careful to speak to you in this matter. Our God, who we serve, will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we are going to pray. I like you to say, Oh God, tonight, give me the finisher's anointing. Give me the finisher's anointing. One more time I will push. Come on, open your mouth and pray. The finisher's anointing. The anointing. The finisher's anointing. Koinonia, pray. You are almost there. Don't give up. When your season is about unveiling, don't give up. You paid the price for 10 years, for 5 years. You paid the price. You pay the price. Lord, give me the finishers anointing. I answer. I answer. I receive the finishers anointing. The next is inside me. But I won't give up. Oh, God, 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 God. I'm a part of faith. I receive the finishers anointing. They may call me Mother Teresa, but I will keep walking in holiness. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Till my chest comes. Die and shine. Happens to them. Oh my soul, wait down upon the God of your salvation. Though thy beginning be small, but your latter end shall be great. Though thy beginning be small, hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord. When they are strength. When they are almost casting out. Suddenly. When the devil is celebrating. The finishing of the oil. A prophetic word. Brings it back again. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. I like us to prophesy. And say Lord. I will become what you have shown me. Nothing will stop me. I'm on my way coming, prophesy. 
I will become that shepherd that you have told me. I will become that great man. I prophesy. I send a prophecy to my destiny. Here now, you will enter your realm of greatness. Koinonia, you will only rise from glory to glory, from place to place, from prosperity to prosperity. One level of the anointing after another. Prophesy. I call my family blessed. I call my loved ones blessed. I call my destiny blessed. The hand of the Lord that has started this work. The hand of the Lord that started this ministry. The hand of the Lord will complete it. And the sound of praise. The sound of praise. The sound of praise. It is not by power. It is not by might. It is an ability of the Spirit. It is an ability of the Spirit. like adding just one more prayer point we are going to pray specifically for the finances of our lives and our loved ones are you ready to pray two prayer points on that are just at once cause the powers are you getting me i told you there are some delays that are not godly there are some waitings that are delays i like you to cause the powers and release increase how many people are ready to pray say after me in the name of jesus Say it again in the name of Jesus. I stand as an ambassador of the kingdom and I plead the blood of Jesus over everything that speaks against the prosperity of my life and my family. Lift up your head, O ye gates. Shake it, Papa. And be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. Lift your voice and speak. We bring the blood of Jesus. 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 We
Lift your hands, everyone. Lift your hands. I prophesy over your life. Everything that has made you unthankful, everything that has made you impatient, that you are about to fall out in this season and compromise, I cut that power now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every other voice you've been listening to that is not the voice of His Majesty, tonight we silence that voice in the name of Jesus. Every wrong relationship, wrong association, wrong business, wrong ties, in the name of Jesus Christ, that is giving Satan access to destroy you, be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. I pray for you. Where your strength is almost failing, tonight, receive a supply of strength. A supply that will last you until you arrive. In the mighty name of Jesus. That when men say there is a casting down, for you, you will say there is a lifting up. And I speak over everything in your life that is dead. That the devil has told you there is no hope. In the name that is above all names, I command those dry bones, come alive now. Come alive now. That dying CGPA, come alive now. That dying family, come alive now. That dying marriage, come alive now. For your expectations shall not be perfect. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You invited someone who has been suffering from migraine. Migraine, it comes especially in the morning. Just this side. Who is the person? Serious migraine. The Lord wants to heal the person now. Please, whether inside or outside. If you are the person, just stand. Let's not waste time. Migraine. You wake up in the morning and sometimes it's really very, very heavy on you. Inside or outside. Please, when you identify the person, let me pray for the person. Ephesians 4. Are you there? Verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So the Bible says every one of us grace is given according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what it is, but he also descended first to the lower parts of the earth. I hope you know this is talking about hell. He that descended is the same that ascended up far above all the heavens, that he might feel all things. 11. As a result, he gave unto some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ 14 it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness by which they lie in wait to deceive 15 but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things who is the head even christ 16 can we read together one to read from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compact by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself 
make it increase of the body tonight i want to briefly talk about spiritual growth spiritual growth our time is gone but we thank god for what he did let's just see how far we can go spiritual growth hallelujah please look up now by the grace of god one of the things that we seek to do in this place please listen is to help us understand spiritual realities please listen spiritual realities one of the greatest discoveries i made in my life is that life is spiritual everybody say after me life is spiritual say one more time life is spiritual it's important you understand this because we live in an intellectual realm where people want to give scientific explanation to everything but i need you to know the bible says in hebrews 11 from verse 3 it says through faith we understand that the worlds were made by the word of god so that the things that were made did not just appear like that but they came as a result of the immaterial realm I'm paraphrasing and so it's not enough to just think that oh okay we live in an intellectual realm a 21st century realm life is spiritual say one more time life is spiritual when i say life it means every other thing that life consists of academics is spiritual marriage spiritual prosperity poverty success when you understand the spiritual dimension of life it automatically puts you in a position of victory so that you begin to interpret things first from the plane of the spirit before giving it any intellectual you see intellectualism has killed a lot of people hallelujah there are so many families for instance that are going through things that you obviously know this is the devil but when you tell them this is not of god they will try to give it an intellectual are you following me now there are some of you for instance who do not believe that god put tithing to govern the prosperity of a believer's life you don't believe it when you see people come out to pay their tithe you just laugh say forget if you work hard no devil will stop you you really think so one more time say after me life is spiritual and our goal is to open you up to the realm of the spirit through the lens of the word of god notice notice my choice of words to open you up to the realm of the spirit through what because there are many ways of being open to the realm of the spirit through divination sorcery soothsayers you can go to the traditionalist in your house or in your village and he can do something and wash your eyes this is what a lot of prophets around nigeria do they go and by divination they concoct some things and suddenly they begin to hear and they begin to see what we do not understand is there are many planes in the spirit realm the fact that you are seeing the spirit does not mean you are seeing heaven or no there are many planes in the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit is a real atmosphere just like the earth hallelujah so when when you understand the spiritual implication of life you will know that you are a spiritual man all the time let me show you something first corinthians lord grant us grace to just put something on ground before our time is up first corinthians please first corinthians 2 let's see what the bible has to say first corinthians 2 from verse 13 and 14 first corinthians 2 verse 13 he said which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teach it but which the holy ghost teach it comparing what with what see your affair as a believer is entirely spiritual when you begin to reduce yourself from the spiritual realm 
down to the intellectual realm and the physical realm, you will become a fool. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, not the things that man's wisdom, the word here is Sophia. Man's wisdom. Men have ways of interpreting spiritual things. Someone is convulsing and you are telling the person, this is a demonic thing. They say, no. You see, um, something happened. The person ate pepper and so on and so forth. The Bible says, not man's wisdom. This is the one that the Holy Ghost reveals. Are you listening to me? How do you explain to someone that HIV is a spirit? It's not just sickness. It's a spirit. It's not everyone that has HIV who had it through sex. Are you getting my point? Some people are shocked. They just went to the hospital. They checked their blood and they say, Mr. Man, you are positive to HIV 1 and 2. What happened? And now everybody starts saying what, what you have done in the secret. Now we have all known. And you blame people. You are interpreting things based on man's wisdom, Sophia. Hallelujah. But when the Holy Ghost begins to guide you, he will tilt your interpretation to spiritual things. So when you see somebody annoyed at you or hates you, you don't judge from the physical realm. Are you following me now? You begin to look, what is making this person do this? And you will find out that this person may not even, this person is reacting either to frustrations or to a need for spiritual help and you offer solution to people. We are talking about spiritual growth. I just want to put something here. This is not the real verse. Verse 14, that's where I just want to show you something. Let's read together. I want to read. Look up. But the natural man stop. He said the natural man does what? What, what does receive it not mean? In your new living English resents every time you begin to hear spiritual things your mind this is what happened to many of us when you started coming for koinonia when you watch these things is it true is it real are you sure the natural man cannot receive of the things of the spirit when you begin to teach spiritual truth it becomes too heavy for your intellectual mind you have believed that whatever will be will be now you are told that in Christ you can take charge of your destiny. The Bible says, for they are what? They are what? So when you see someone calling you a fool, don't be angry. The person is helping you to know which realm he is operating for. Are you listening to me? When you tell someone, tithe 10%, the devourer will be rebuked. This and that, the person will look at you and say, Mr. Man, I went to school. I'm not an idiot. When you hear people telling you that kind of thing, be careful. Because there are anointed men of God who went to school. Are you listening to me? They went to UK. They went to Germany. They went to India. They kept their spiritual lives there. And they came back with a lot of... That's why you see, when God really wants to use somebody, let me tell you something, in a very deep spiritual thing, God will call you. Oftentimes, God will ask the people to lay aside their ambition, whatever. It doesn't matter what they studied or didn't study. And God will begin to lead them. Because the things of the Spirit will wrestle the things you have known. He says they are foolishness. You see a growth right here. And you are telling the person that this can go and it can disappear immediately. Does it make sense? It doesn't. Hallelujah. I hope we don't have people here who are still sitting down to doubt and wondering, is God real? You hear people say that. The Bible says, only a fool. You know why the person is called a fool now? Because he's a natural man will say in his heart there is no god the bible says neither can he know them he said but they are because they are what so it takes the holy ghost for you to understand spiritual revelations this is not about that's why you can be critical and listen to a message that is blessing someone and you will never get light from it there are people who have read the bible critics atheists they've read the bible cover to cover more than 10 times only to write out all the things that they believe are wrong they read the same book that is changing people but because they are natural men the natural man listen this is where our journey starts every man 
The natural man is one who is born, you are just born by a woman. You are a natural man. You live entirely from the impulses of this realm. The natural man. The natural man. Please look up. From the kingdom's perspective, even a herbalist and a spiritist is a natural man. Notice the choice of I, I love the Bible. He said, The natural man received not the things of what a spirit. He said, The spirit of God. That means you can receive something of another spirit. Are you following me now? So that you don't say, What of herbalist? Uh -uh. The Bible says, This is the test for a natural man, he cannot receive the things of God. See, let me tell you, this is the reason why in many churches, once it's time for someone. That's the time your body will start pinching you. You want to ease yourself. That's the time you are snoring and you are sleeping. They acted drama for one hour. You were laughing. You didn't sleep. The moment the preacher just comes, God has something to say. Sleep just comes. The reason is because you have not opened up your spirit to value the word of God and what it can put in your life. Hallelujah. A lot of people go for meetings and you don't know that some of these things are orchestrated by demons. You just see people uncomfortable when the word comes. It's as if they want to go. They say, Kai, time is up. But you will share the grace and you see them waiting outside. Gisting, buying minerals, buying ice cream. What was the hurry for? Are you following me now? Are you seeing the reason why when you start engaging yourself in worship, the first few times it will be like a sacrifice that you will die because you are you are challenging your flesh your flesh cannot stand that glory that's why many of you will be restless it's, it's the same way you see people react when the power of god comes that's why when you put worship songs all kinds of things ah you have not washed your clothes oh. ah did you reply that text messages but over time as you grow you will learn to suppress and by the authority of the spirit you can wait so you can see somebody just go to pray and he can lie down let the whole world catch fire he has been able to become a spiritual man are you getting me so we all start from that realm of what a natural man hallelujah the natural man one who is not born again at all you've not given your heart to the lord you cannot perceive of spiritual things for instance there are some of you who before you got born again, some of you were unbelievers then. Some of you were not even Christians. When you saw believers praying in tongues or holding themselves to pray, you just say, man, let's watch this drama that is going on. And you are laughing at them. And then later you see somebody fall and you are like, ah! The natural man. Then one day, it started making sense to you. you either you, you got close to believers or people that love God and it wasn't becoming a funny issue again there are some of you the first day you spoke in tongues you were laughing at yourself you were even ashamed to say it outside you just went to lock yourself say pastor jakes what did jakes do for me like this are you following me now say i refuse to be a natural man number two we have those we call carnal christians the word carnal is not an insult. It's just the way we shout it that makes people angry. Carnal is not... The word carnal just means sense-driven. Write it. Sense-driven. So you are born again, but you are driven by your senses. Your five senses. Your sense of taste. Your sense of touch. Those kinds of people can't fast. If there's no food, you can stay from one to three so long as you are not fasting. But the day you are fasting, by 9 o'clock, you are already sweating. You see that? On a very good day, even by 9, you will not have eaten. But because you mentioned that word fasting, your body said, we'll see today. By 2, you are sweating. They say, we have 4 more hours to go and you can't believe it. By 5 o'clock, you are already almost half dead. As soon as they say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you can't even wait. That's why sometimes the church will even prepare something and say, please, please, just wage it before you go to the restaurant. Hallelujah. You know carnal Christians 
by their words, by their actions. The Bible says, when I was a child, void of knowledge, void of growth. Hallelujah. He said, I spoke like a child. I understood like a child. I thought like a child. Look up, please. So, they are born again. They are born again. In fact, they are even filled with the Holy Spirit. But you hear them tell you, see, the next time that sister troubles me, I swear, I'm saying it now, let God be my witness. You are even asking God to be your witness. Because you do not yet know the Lord. You've just heard about Him. You've not had an encounter that has put a spirit of reverence in you. Are you following me now? When the going gets tough, you can do malpractice. You understand? When it gets tough, if one allowed you send you text, you say, Well, me, I won't go out with him, oh, but God knows I will collect whatever. I won't tell him no, I won't tell him yes. At least God will not. You see, that's it. Listen, many believers in the body of Christ are in this realm. Are you listening to me? We can talk, you see. The language of church. There are people who are not born again. Nollywood. They have acted pastor in Nigerian films. They know the language. They even pray in tongues in the Nigerian film. But it doesn't mean they are it. Praise the Lord. Many of us are not born again indeed. You are kana, Ruled by your senses. When you check your bank balance. And you see 2000 naira. Your body starts shaking. Hey, I need money. Oh God, fire brigade prayer that has no head and no tail. That is out of fear, not faith. Oh God, you have to do this. You promise me. I take your word before you. You send almost five pastors a text. You send to one. He said it is done. He said no way, it's not done. Until it happens, you are a canal. There are people like that. Once someone is down, everybody they can call, everything that can happen, they can run from room to room, telling people things you shouldn't tell them because you are governed by your senses. Hallelujah. You just went to bath and you saw a lump in your breast. Everybody just say, what is wrong? You are not normal. I say nothing. Say, what is wrong? You say, me. Me. With all my coming to Koinonia. Now you are saying, God, I'm doing this. Blah, 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 blah. The next thing you are talking, you see. There are many believers. Many of our families are in that realm. We are refusing to grow. This is what happens to many of our fathers. Look at this. Have you noticed that many of our fathers were better Christians when they were young? Correct? As they began to grow old, God didn't make sense again. It tells you. You see why I'm teaching you this? Many of you are students. You are not shouldering your finances. You are not shouldering anything. There are a few people that are workers and family members here. But predominantly, many of us are students. Somebody is sponsoring you. So you've not been exposed to the reality of life. Are you following me now? So some of these messages, when I preach, you need to see me preach in other places that is not koinonia. And see the way the men grab these teachings because they can now relate with it. For now... It's not necessarily your faith that is bringing your provision for many of you. Whether you believe God or not, at the end of the month, you are receiving an alert. So you are not yet sure. Many of you just keep giving tithe all the time. And you think you are a man of faith. Hold on. The day your father tells you, say, look, young man, you are, you are now behaving very responsible. This is to announce to you that the next time you are coming, you are getting out of my house. Please, you can fend for yourself. At your age, I was already married. Out of my house then you leave listen listen then after one month or two months nothing happens to you again and you get angry at everybody so since this was a true state but you kept deceiving yourself on other people's this is why i'm teaching you this now some of you are being shielded now learn it before they expose you to the reality of life that's why at age 40 41 there are some people that are angry forever even if they are laughing the life they are they are they are mad at god that's why when they get any political office or as a man of god if they see any money or offering or whatever they won't let it rest because at this point now are you listening to me fear has come into them 
This is why many of our parents run back to the village. Some of them are choir masters in their churches and they sing songs. My faith is, my hope is built on nothing else. And you see them do it with zeal. Immediately they finish. Monday, they're on their way to the airport. Where are you going? You are spending so much money. They'll go and meet one baba. Now, please help me. You just sang that your hope is built on what? Nothing less. The next minute, you are consulting something. Then, you consult that thing and get a contract and you come and tell people, <laughs> praise the Lord. When Papa prayed for me, I just slept. And like magic, everybody say magic, magic. And who is deceiving who? Hallelujah. Because you see, many of us are in this realm. Some of us, it took the hand of God to bring you back to the things of the spirit. The first day you came to 100 level, bubbling and saying, yes, every prophecy you had, you just checked your result. You saw 2.1, 2 carry over. I said, God, I don't understand. What did I do wrong? Is it that my prayer request didn't reach here? Or they didn't see it? Something begins to happen to you. When you hear somebody comes to testify, praise the Lord, I got 4.6. You say, look, what is going on in this place? Is it that there are some people? Go, you see, and then you hear people say, some of us, oh, we are not the people of God. And many believers laugh over this, but we will not rise. Do you know that 90% of people that remain in this realm may lose their salvation eventually? Because Satan knows how to orchestrate events that will make the word of God look useless in your life. Are you listening to me? Many of us are just governed by result. Result. You came to be prayed for. They laid hands on you. You went back. The sickness didn't leave. The next thing you just say, forget. This thing they are doing. Me have confirmed. is fake. Let me tell you something. I've prayed for many people. Some of them died a few days after I prayed for them. If you say I'm not a man of God because I prayed for somebody and he died, you must be a foolish person. Doctors kill people every day. What do we call them? Say it. What do we call them? It's not a thing of laughter because I'm sad in my spirit. I know that I need to contend. Are you listening to me? For more grace and more unction of the spirit. But there are many of us who don't grow. That's why many people like a prophet over my life or a this. Now, I believe in the place of covering, but not the demonic teaching that has been taught the church. Because what a lot of men of God have taught is, don't worry. Once you are under my church or my roof, I will cover for you. Go and do whatever. My anointing covers for you. Let me tell you something. That means the day that man of God is not there. You see what makes people depend on the man of God? Carnal believers. This is my concern in the body of Christ. There are some of you who are seated. There is no passion in you. When we see, listen, when we talk about, when we talk about prayer, when we say everybody stand to pray, honestly, you are not even relating with the message. You don't know whether you should pray or not. You don't care. I see it in some of us. Because you don't have a revelation of what it will do in your life. Whether you pray or not, your father just calls and says, I just got a contract of five billion. And you are like, this doesn't make sense. Why are they punishing me in Koinonia? You pray fast, tight. Your father has even told you, fine rest, just finish degree so that it will be that you have degree, for God's sake. And you say, I'm sure of 10 million that my father kept for me. Have you not seen the great fall into nothing? Ask Nebuchadnezzar. Many of us really do not have faith in God. We have faith in people. It's just that the people look strong and stable. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh Lord, I love you. Oh Lord, I will walk by your grace. Now you are 30, 31, 32. No man has come to marry you. Then one unbeliever comes. And you say, even God 
will not stop me. Even God, where were you? Even God, you won't stop me. Listen, please hold on, just drop this thing. How many of you, you're going to lift your hands if you believe, if you don't believe, drop your hands. How many of you are going to live by the principles of the word 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now and you will teach your children, let me see your hands. And I'm very serious. God is watching you. God is watching you. Because the way I'm looking at some of you, you are even angry at what I'm saying. God is watching you. Please put down your hands. God bless you. How many of you have made up your mind? Some of you will make up your mind this night. But how many of you have made up your mind that whatever is not consistent with God's word, I'm out of it? Honestly. Not everybody should raise their hands. So don't tell lies. Don't tell lies. This is a place of honesty. I appreciate those of you who have not raised your hands. May God honor you. We are going to pray. This is what this meeting is for. Some of you who raise your hands and you don't mean it. You know why I'm saying this? Let me tell you. This word will be tested in your lifetime. Did you hear what I said? What did I say? This word will be tested in your lifetime. When you don't get a job after one year, all your shouting now becomes foolishness. You just look and say, man, forget. Who do you know in that office? Say, I don't know anybody. You'll say, nobody at all. But you shouted, I wouldn't trade you for silver or gold, for this and that and that. I want this to sink into our hearts. What kind of believers? I know God is helping us and this is why I'm teaching this. There are some of us here that are still involved in malpractice. Say, Toy, if I don't do it, me, I'm not very sharp. I went to all these LEA schools, they don't even teach anything. Yeah? You, you went to uh, uh, Queen's College, King's College, us, we went to school that we were. So, what you are telling God is, Lord, I do not believe. This thing that says your word. In your word that you can quicken my understanding i don't believe it do you see the reason why be many believers do not walk in the power and the glory of god we really don't believe god see talk is cheap talk is cheap talk is cheap there are many men of god that teach people for instance about financial prosperity they teach about tithing they teach about giving they have millions in their accounts. There are people in their church that even bicycle they don't have. They won't buy it. Yet they talk about giving. And they shout about it with confidence. Who is deceiving who? Are you listening to me? We stand and preach and we tell the members, empty your account. God will bless you. And the man who is talking in question, he has millions and probably billions in his account. Why don't you practice the word? If it is working for you, then it will work for your people. Are you listening to me? Canal believers. The moment challenges come, what happens? They give way. This is, this is how you know believers that are carnally minded. Oh, they thank God. Once it's time for marriage. Say, by nine months. The baby comes in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody says, Amen. And it does. He said, This is the best thing that's ever happened to me that I'm marrying. Oh God, you are faithful. They, they don't know what they are doing. They are just enjoying the euphoria of the marriage. Three months. Your mother calls you and says, Ah, what is going on? We are not seeing anything. We are not hearing anything. And you just cook up one story. You say, eh, We are just taking our time. After one year, what is happening? And you come back and you say, Lord, the people in my village are already embarrassing me. My mother is already embarrassing me. What is this? Then one woman calls you and says, Toh, uh, in my little way to help you, it's not much, but I hope that it will help and you'll be listening. He said, there's one man who, um, I'm not forcing you and you'll be listening. But you, you already know because the spirit of God is in you. You already know where they are going to. Are you getting me? 
and you say, Tom, me, I won't go, but just do it and bring it for me. Have you not done the same thing? Praise the Lord. Somebody says, package an offering and bring the face of the man you want to marry. You will now go and carry Jake's picture. Oh God. Oh God. This guy, you will sit down and be looking as if you are not seeing any. You must see me today. And then you package a seed. See, listen. Do you know, this is the reason why, do you notice that many believers like things that are diabolic? We just like it. If you pray for somebody, you say no, but you tell him, all right, wear a black cloth, 12, 15, exactly. Wake up. The person will say, I like this man of God. I like him. Jesus said, if the son of man comes back, will he find faith in the earth? Faith. I prayed for one woman one time. The woman said she's a prayer warrior. After I finished praying for her, like two or three minutes later, she called me. She said, man of God, have, have you not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with giving people things. Are you listening to me? Scriptures or prayers or all of this. No, no, no. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that believers need to rise to a level where they can trust the word of God without any auxiliary support. There are people who believe nothing will work for them if their pastor has not laid hands or touch their file or their prayer request or whatever. While it is true, and by God's grace, the men of God will always keep praying and ministering to you, but do you not believe that God is able in your own life? Senses. You are driven by what you see. You are driven by what you see. You are driven by what you hear. Ah! I had this and that and that and that and that. And that becomes... This is what happens. Our fathers in our house, sometimes they will just hold one imaginary prayer that they didn't discuss with anybody. You just see one man of God who just come and say, my name is Apostle, this and that. I'm here to lead your family. And he said, what is going on? It's only him that knows what is worrying him. He said, um, the issue, I gathered everybody to tell you about a dream I had yesterday. I saw myself dead. It was only your mother that was alive and uh, I don't think this is a good dream. But the day every other person in your family said they saw themselves dying, he didn't listen. He didn't care. The day he saw himself dying, that day you gather everybody. Senses. Some of you come into ABU and they just tell you there's so, so, so lecturer. This man, when you get to 300 level, just start crying. And truly, when you get there, you start crying. The first day you see him, you've already failed in your mind. And then it so happens that the man looks at you. Says, that girl chewing gum in my... Stand up! He said, this, you always know those who will get F. Look at her. And that kills you. You get zero in the test, zero in assignment, zero in practical, zero in exams. Not because you are not smart. You died before you started. Senses. Hallelujah. Your roommate just tells you, look, you will see. The next day, stone just hits your leg. Hey! I've always known. <laughs> Believers, I'm not laughing about this. We are going to pray. You must come to a point where you grow up. You grow up in the things of the spirit. You grow up in the revelation of the word. The word, listen, the word does two things. It says, I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise. It will first make you, say transformation, transformation. then gives you an inheritance, empowerment. The word of God transforms you. It empowers you. Mike, stand up. If somebody looks at you now and says, Mike, you are going to die tomorrow. What will you do? Honestly. You, he said you will laugh. Why? But do you know there are some people that laughed like that and died? They laughed. The next day, exact time they died. If you have not seen the burning bush, don't go and stand before Pharaoh. It can be dangerous. God bless you. You see that? But when the word of God builds, see, listen, this is why we teach the word of God all the time. 
The Bible says, if someone tells me, ah, yeah, only when we get to heaven, I will know how many attempts have been made to kill me. I've eaten everything given to me. We have been to places. The Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am convinced that no man can take my life. I am convinced. I am convinced. This, see, this is not the issue of claiming. What is the basis of my conviction? That I'm a mature man? No. What is the basis of my conviction? That I have found out that life and death was set before me. Blessing and cursing was set before me. And he said what? Choose life. I've chosen life. I chose it. Many of you don't know what I've gone through. If you know, you will know that I'm alive. I'm alive today. Cars jam me. I've met armed robbers on the road. I was almost dying of a fungal infection. Growth. Are you listening to me? You know that, that, that crash, Dana, Dana air crash, that thing was demonic. I was going to worry. I've shared my story. We were in the air. When I started sensing that this atmosphere, this thing is demonic. And we're going around Lagos. The pilot just said we're going to land soon. We're just waiting. The plane was just going round, going round. Later, people started becoming uncomfortable with the plane. I just started praying in tongues. Then I kept quiet and I sat down quietly. I knew that this was the spirit of death. See, the devil can kill one million people to get one genuine man of God. Don't you think the devil values lives? He can waste a whole nation. Ask Moses. Ask Jesus. A Two years and below, he killed everybody just to find Jesus. It's, it didn't start it today. When I sensed that, scripture started welling out. This is the third dimension, the spiritual man. The spiritual man is one who has taken the... He has come under the authority of God's word. Your senses can no longer detect your life. The things you hear, the things you see... Are you listening to me? These things have no hold on the authority of God's word again. So you see a woman with cancer being eaten up. And she's telling you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe the word of God. I see myself whole. I see myself blessed. That's faith. That's faith. You see a student with 10 carryovers looking and he's singing. And he's saying, Lord, I give you glory. If I wore a convocation, a, grad, a graduation, a what? Matriculation gown. I wear a convocation gown. And the person is laughing. And you don't understand. You see a man who has not started a building project. He calls his family. He said, let's rejoice. God has done it. Let's give him praise. And you're like, daddy, don't make us stupid. Spiritual men. There are very few of these men that we have in the body of Christ. There are many men of God who are not spiritual men. I'm a man of God and I can tell you. You hear preachers preaching. How do you get money? Hey, this thing in our church now. The rent is, is, is getting too bad. How do you really get money? But hear the person preach on, on pulpit. Oh, I know. Nothing moves me. Nothing shakes me. Wave your leg and, and do this. And then you laugh. The same person runs back. And they start noting one or two or three wealthy men. And they now call them together. And they say, people, God gave a prophetic instruction. I saw the spirit of death on you. We need one million from you. This is somebody who told us he was persuaded that he knew the God that sent him. Brothers and sisters, time will challenge the word of God in you. At that point, you will know whether you are a spiritual man or a carnal one. The wife of Job looked at him and said, Job, curse God and die. Job, you were a rich man. You were an influential man. He said in chapter 29, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, he said that the young men saw me and bowed their faces. The old men saw me and they stood still. I sought butter from the rock. This was a man's life. Now he had been reduced to shambles. And he said, though he slay me, yet will I praise him. He said, I know my redeemer liveth. Spiritual people. Because 
the rate at which the body of Christ is going, I'm very afraid we may not stand the test of time. Satan will throw whatever arsenal. Can I tell you something? You will never enter your promised land with flower. You know when a bride and a husband are dancing, what's that thing that they put for them? That spray. Snow spray. You won't get it on the road to your destiny. Joseph was inside the prison. But he was favored of God. And he already knew many of us do not believe god you started believing god when your uncle said i'm going to bless you your uncle said just to announce to you that i have been transferred i'm now in france you say god what is this god you told me is god limited answer me i want every one of us to be spiritual men see spiritual men are not just those who have anointed to touch people and fall many people who touch people and fall are still carnal christians Challenges are the true tests of whether you are a spiritual man or not. They just drove your father from work. He comes back home. Three hours later, he's almost dying of high blood pressure. That's a carnal Christian. See, I am convinced. You may call it bragging. There is, there is nothing in this life. And see, let me tell you my little life. I've had things that have challenged me. But let me tell you, there is nothing that will stop me from sleeping in the night. Or get, no, no. If God is not sleeping and I'm not sleeping, who is in charge? Are you listening to me? Never to once have any of us lacked sleep because of koinonia. Say, oh God, where will we get the money now? All these chairs. Oh no, our God is faithful. If the word of God does not work, then I will stop preaching it. I would rather stop it than deceive the people of God. Are you listening to me? My father was challenged in his place of work. And I remember one time he called me. I told him, don't worry. The Lord is going to honor you. The Lord will bless you. I'm happy seeing my parents and my family members strong in the convictions of God. How dare you say God is not faithful? How old are you to test his faithfulness? Abraham tested it. And in the end of it, he knew that God was faithful. How far have you gone in life that you can sit down and put a verdict? That you are 31 and there's nobody who has come to marry you does not mean God is not faithful. When you give thanks, he will show you what is wrong. In your thanksgiving, you will find a way. The Bible says, enter his gates and his court. What do you do in a law court? You present your case. The Bible says it's with praise. As you praise God, you say, Lord, I don't understand what is happening, but I'm praising you. God says, then I will make you understand so that you will come out of this once and for all. Listen, I'm teaching you spiritual things. There's no time. I hope that just give me five, ten minutes, I'll be done. I wish I had time because I wanted to teach you about the origin of Satan. And to teach you how that Satan is not what we say he is. When you know this, you will walk in victory forever. Let me surprise you. Did you know that Satan does not stay in the earth realm? Satan is not always in the earth realm. But he has put you in charge. He said the heaven of heavens belong to God. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. He said rule thou in the midst of your enemies. Spiritual growth. That you are transformed by the power of the word. Listen. The greatest gift I can give you koinonia. Is the gift of the revelation of God's word. Not just the word of God. He said the revelation of Jesus. Which he showed unto his servant John. The revelation. Many of you have the word, but you don't have the revelation of it. Are you listening to me? So word, 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 word. It's not producing any result. The Bible says, and when he break the bread, their eyes were open. Hagar. The Bible says, Hagar. When she was banished by Abraham's wife, Sarah. Because she was laughing and they were scorning at Isaac. 
she was banished with ishmael her son and the bible says she was in the desert and her water had finished and she was about to die did you know that there was a well in that desert but she could not see it the bible says and god quickened her eyes the angel of the lord quickened her eyes he said call unto me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things which thou Say, so open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. If the Lord opens your eyes, you will be in command. No devil of darkness, no power in existence can stand you if you have the revelation of the word of God. Believe me. Believe me. I am convinced that nobody can take my life. I am absolutely convinced. I am convinced that I will have my destiny the way the word of God says it. Satan notwithstanding. As a matter of fact, I need him to be a witness. That Jesus reigns. Spiritual people. How many of you are governed by the word of God? Your conversation is consistent with the word at all times. At all times. People look at you and say, ah, we are suffering, no oh, things are bad, it's over for us. And you say, uh-uh, it's not over. For my Bible says, the word of God must always be your reference. Faith in the word of God. Faith in the word of God. Faith in the truth of God's word. Every time you say, this is my conviction, you tell us the basis. The Bible says, I shall not die, but live to declare. So as long as I'm declaring the word of God, no man born of a woman. The Bible tells me that I will meditate upon the word of God day and night. And he said, by doing so, I will observe all that is written therein. I will make my ways prosperous and I will have good success. I found out from God's word that my success is my responsibility in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And I refuse to be irresponsible. Are you following me now? This is the basis of your confidence. So, the Bible says, holding forth the shield of faith, wherein you will be able to quench all the fiery darts. Satan shoots it at you. Everybody is dying at 30. You raise the shield of faith that comes through the word, activated the spirit of faith, activated by speaking. The Bible says that they died in the wilderness because of unbelief. But I'm a believer. The word of God is in me. I have a heritage of long life. Hallelujah. Koinonia is blessed. It's of the Lord. People will keep coming and they'll keep getting blessed. Why? The Bible says, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw. That means the secret is to let Christ be lifted up at every time. The day I stop exalting myself, what happened? You will bring the people by yourself. There will never be any financial stress of, upon us in ministry. Why? Because we are not prospering alone. We are teaching you the secret and you are also prospering. A prosperous congregation will produce a prosperous church. Period. If a man of God is rich and his church is broke, they will strangle him. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I refuse sickness in my life. I refuse. I'm a believer. My eyes, the word of God has become my eyes. My new sense of sight. The Bible says, the, 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 it said the eye is the light of the body. So when the word of God becomes your new eyes, you begin to see reality only from the lens of God's word. I don't see failure in my life. I'm telling you, I don't see failure in my life. God has given me confidence have so much confidence in myself he said cast not away your confidence it has a great recompense of reward my bible tells me that a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side none shall harm me only with my eyes will i wash and see the reward of the wicked i believe this truth nothing will change my mind i'm convinced about it the Bible tells me it shall come to pass if I shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that he has commanded me. He said he will set me on, upon on high and all these blessings will come upon me and overtake me. I believe it. I am convinced. 
Hallelujah. Sister, if I ask you why are you sure you are going, how are you sure you are going to get married? What will you say? Because I'm fine. And one guy has told me he likes me. If that is your basis, you will receive a root shock. Because I've seen really pretty ladies. But the, you tell me, I'm a spiritual man. And Isaiah 34 tells me, he says, seek out of the book and read. None of this shall fail. None shall want her mate. This is the basis of my conviction. Are you listening to me? Gentlemen, please give me Psalms 128, media. I know I'm going to be a happy father. I'm going to have happy children. The economy of nations notwithstanding. Hallelujah. You must believe. I'm teaching you to be governed. Say I'm governed by the word of God. Alright, listen. Let's read. Guys, this is a scripture for you. Listen. If you catch this scripture, that devil that is breaking families, that devil that is shattering families, that a father and children, that, that thing will be far from your life. It's not by talk, it's by the reality of God's word. Guys, follow me. Blessed is everyone that shared the Lord, that walked in his ways. Verse 2. He said, for shall shall what? It's the labor of your hand. He said, happy shall thou be, and it shall be what? Verse 3. It's so it means you will marry. He said, whose wife? Come on, brothers. All these heart attack people give themselves. Is carnality. Brothers, am I ministering to you? He said, thy wife shall be as a what? Fruitful, fine. No barrenness in your life. So says the word of God. Every factor notwithstanding. He said, ah, but we are 15 years, no child. You just hold on to the word of God. He said, thy children. That means you can have many. It is your discussion with your wife that should end it. Not medical predicaments. I wish I planned to have plenty of children. I would have proven a point, but I plan to have three. After three, I've contributed my quota to the planet. <laughs> if I'm lonely, I'll buy a puppy. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, thy children, like all these plants, that means your children will not be stubborn. You won't go and catch one child somewhere. Police will catch him and say, come, is this your child? You say, yes. He said, they'll be round about your table. Take her on. Control. This is the word of God. Behold. Guys, all of you said, one, two, three. Thus shall the man be blessed that fears the Lord. How many of us fear the Lord here? This is your destiny. This is your marital destiny. What do you do? You take this word. I believe it. I take it. I receive it. This is true. This is true. I don't expect to be an irresponsible father. This is not the issue of job. This is an issue of the word. Nobody's job can bring you into financial prosperity. Let me tell you early enough. It's going to be your operation of kingdom principles. Hallelujah. Ladies, let me show you the scripture I just said. And then we'll pray. We'll take a series on relationship. We've not taken a marriage, marriage, the home generally. We've not taken it for a while. Turn with me to Isaiah 34 quickly. I just want to show you. Isaiah 34 16. All the ladies stand up. You're going to read it. Stand up. You are a lady here. Let me not see any man standing up. Are you ready to read? Want to read? None of this shall fail. He said what? None shall want her mate. Is that in the Bible? Is that in the Bible? So, that somebody is saying that uh, you must go and parade yourself around some army officers so that the man will see you or police officer they say they are doing pop in kaduna i say let's go let's go for our destiny the bible says none shall want her mate he said for the mouth of the lord so it's a command a command has been given in the earth that every woman that wants to marry see but it will only happen to you to the degree to which you believe i'm a believer 
I'm a believer. I'm a spiritual man. Governed by the word of God. He said, and his spirit had gathered them. Sit down. God bless you. Say after me, I live by the word. Shout it. I live by the word. I refuse to die young. This is not because I'm afraid of death. I have more serious business to do. I don't think death. See, when I'm traveling for a journey, I don't pray about it. I don't do this fearful prayer. If I didn't pray about it in my secret place, I don't pray to eat food. And food has never stopped entering my throat. Fear is responsible for many things that we do as believers. If the devil drives my car, he will drive me safely. I assure you. Except this earth is not of the Lord. Boldness. Audacity. This is what it means to be a spiritual man. You can look at your destiny and you can say, I'm coming. I'm coming. Maybe you notwithstanding. The joblessness in Nigeria notwithstanding. Look at many people running helter-skelter. I refuse. I rather come and stay with God's word. People are running to all kinds of things. I hear that there's something going on in Nasara State now. There's a particular tribe that uh, they are, what are they doing? They are calling the people in charge of that tribe to come and register something that they are reviving their idols. They say this government thing is not working. Many families are running. Let's go. That means they've always wanted it. But my Bible tells me the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. See, if it is for death, I would have died since. But the mercy of God, the hand of God, the word of God, I am convinced. Can you dare say that about your life? Guys, say it. I will never have to think over my child's school fees. Even if the school fees is one million naira per time. God is faithful. So you tight, you pray, you love God. You obey the principles of God. No rat race with my wife. I slap you, you slap me back. Uh -uh. There is peace in your home. You say, is it possible in this Nigeria? That's, the, that's what we're talking about now. That's what we're talking about now. I'm well favored. Everywhere I go, I'm favored. I'm telling you, even those who don't love me, there is an anointing of the Spirit. It will compel them to bless me. I'm favored. I'm favored. The Bible says when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies. His enemies. Do you believe this? The Bible says Daniel was ten times better. I refuse to be dull. You will tell yourself, I refuse that report the lecturer said. I refuse it. I'm a spiritual man. I refuse to bribe. I refuse to cheat. Sister, you will speak. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. No man will come and toy around with my life. Nobody will try to take my, 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 my weaknesses or my limitations and take advantage of it. I'm not preparing myself for one irresponsible man. You have to advise yourself. Are you listening to me? Don't behave as if you are just one cheap lady. Any guy that comes, you are just running. Let's try and see. Gain stability in the spirit. Hey, let's try if it doesn't work. If I leave him now, where will I get another one? How did that one come? We are going to pray. Say, I'm a spiritual man. The Holy Spirit helps us. We'll take the part two of this series another time. I really need to teach on some things. Very important. Listen, every time you agree with God, things start happening in the realm of the spirit. Are you listening to me? There are angels that are released. There are angels. I believe this for my life. I will never be a failure in life. Never. This is not just, it has become my reality. I won't think otherwise. See, when you stand in agreement with God, it's like a force. It will squeeze everything in time to come to the obedience of Christ. There is no power in existence, not known to man, that can stand against the word of God when it is understood 
rightly applied in the name of the Lord Jesus. Did you, did you hear what I said? When it is what? Understood and correctly applied. You are bigger than what people say. Yahweh. 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 You are bigger than what people say. Yahweh. Listen. We are going to rise up and pray just for five minutes. And you are going to declare that I come out of carnality into true spirituality. Listen. There are some of you here who are not filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of praying in tongues. We talk about praying in tongues. And you join people to doubt and criticize what you don't understand. Part of the traits of a spiritual man is that you are humble to learn new things. Are you listening to me? Every time Pastor Jakes announces, you just sit down, you are watching people. One trait of a spiritual man, again, right, is that you are obedient unto death. Obedience unto death. Many of us are not obedient unto death. If it will take 30 years for God's prosperity word to come alive, I will keep tithing. I will keep giving. I will keep praying. Obedience. Many of us are not obedient. You know the word. You can talk it. You can do Bible study. But to obey. Because let me tell you something. If many of us were truly obedient to the word, we will stop making the bad decisions we are making every day. I believe in the word. It governs my life. Rise up on your feet. Spiritual growth. I come to a point where the word of God governs my life. We are going to pray two prayer points. Number one, we are going to say, Lord, I'm tired of unbelief in my life. Whatever is making me not to believe you or take your word seriously and as final in my life, I declare that let it be taken away from my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I wrestle unbelief violently from my life. I'm tired of doubting your word. When I hear your word, I find myself wrestling is it true? Can God really do what he says he will do? I'm a believer. I'm a spiritual man. I'm a believer. I grow up in the spirit. Make sure you are praying. Manto Unbelief. The word of God takes you out of my life. I believe in the word of God. God is not a man that he should lie. God cannot lie. He's not the son of man. Even if the word of God does not produce results, I still believe it. Make sure you are praying. It will make you mighty in the things of God. Don't take this lightly. Hallelujah. 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 If you have your Bible, you are going to hold it as you pray. You are going to say, Lord, your word governs every area of my life. Every. Listen. Listen some of you you really need to pray because the word of god is not governing certain areas you are not working in consistency with god's word it may be in the area of character your words you speak as if you are not born again you behave as if you are not born again you know the things that are wrong and there is grace for you not to do them but you keep doing them we are going to pray you will hold this word and say your word have i hidden in my heart oh god I receive grace. 
I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by my feelings. I value the integrity of God's word above and beyond any report. I believe the report of the Lord for my health, for my prosperity, for my family, for my life. Lift your voice and pray. Shata takata baladaba, rakata presa kete belere bush, mam pres kapa teke le baraba baraba, shata kete kete belere bush. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, the Bible says, speaking about Abraham, in Romans four, he said, "I'm being not weak in faith." weak in faith weak in faith he considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb nor himself even though he was a hundred years old he counted him faithful can I tell you something you are going to pray and say Lord I receive grace I won't be weak in faith again I won't be strong today and act like a believer and then tomorrow I'm falling like a leaf lift your voice strong in faith giving glory to God I'm strong my convictions about God are solid my convictions about his word solid no bending no wavering shata kata balanaba rakata pakasata balanabosh I refuse to doubt God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in one minute, every one of us is going to confess what you have found in scripture. The, the Bible says, Luke 4, from verse 16, he said it was given to him and he found the place where it was written concerning him. Have you found where it has been written concerning you? I found it for myself. You are going to speak now concerning your finance concerning your health concerning your destiny are you ready to speak are you ready to speak lift your voice and begin to speak i'm blessed in the name of jesus don't keep quiet i'm blessed the word of god tells me that i'm the head and not beneath my part is as a shining light it shines brighter outside make sure you are praying brighter and brighter unto the perfect day the favor of god compasses me as a shield in the name of jesus the lord is my shepherd i shall not want the lord is my shepherd i shall not want I choose life life i refuse death i have no covenant with death i'm healthy and strong no inhabitant of zion shall say i am sick i enjoy the health of god if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body that same spirit will quicken me Pray. no headaches in the name of Jesus no malaria no typhoid no pains no aches in the name of Jesus even if you are sick declare it by the power of the Holy Ghost the name of the Lord is a strong tower I am protected I am covered in the name of Jesus I'm well favored. Hallelujah. Koinonia is blessed from one level of the anointing, one level of grace, one level of power. The abiding presence of God is with us. We are a separate people. We are a distinguished people. I step into honor. It's my year of supernatural exploits. Exploits in every ramification. 
by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm not alone. God is working with me, confirming my words with signs following. I'm well favored. I'm well favored. I'm well positioned to meet my destiny helpers. I'm well positioned. The word of God is working for me. I have spiritual understanding. I'm above demons, above principalities. In the name of Jesus, I have authority. No devil can stop me from manifesting. My destiny is great. My destiny is colorful. I'm fruitful on every side. Fruitful on every side. Blessed in my going out. Blessed in my coming in. Blessed in my going out. Blessed in my coming in. Blessed in my going out. Blessed in my going in. The works of my hands are blessed. Everything I lay my hands to do, I prosper. The Bible says, and whatsoever he doeth prospers. I have an unction from the Holy One. I have understanding. I'm not weak. I'm not beggarly. I am great. I have a great destiny. In the name of Jesus, I am prosperous. I am blessed. The hand of God is upon my life. I am distinguished. I am favored on all sides. Hallelujah. Listen. You cannot talk like this and have your life remain at that level. No matter what happens, be consistent. Say, I'll be consistent. Every time, listen, a spiritual man responds. Every time you see something that is of God, glory to God. Thank God the word of God has produced result. Lord, I give you honor. I give you praise. To you be all the praise. That's a spiritual man. The moment things go wrong in the name of Jesus, I refuse to let this move my spirit. The word of God says this and that. I believe the word of God. Don't say I'm ashamed that those who are there. Are you joking? Then you are not a spiritual man. Paul said, but I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. Are you persuaded? I am convinced beyond a shadow of doubt. Hallelujah. I live by the word. The word of God is final authority. Stop talking like a foolish person. Talk like a spiritual man. Don't find yourself speaking those garbages. Throw them out of your dictionary. Don't speak words of failure. Don't speak words of deceit. Tell yourself I am strong. Yes, that's what the Bible says. Tell yourself I am rich. I am blessed. I am favored. I am anointed. You are not just confessing. You are creating it. You are creating it. Through faith, we understand that the world was created, framed. If you don't stand in God's word, you will create nonsense. Stop speaking words of deceit and defeat and failure and weakness. You are not the weak. You are strong. This is not motivation. You are not just speaking into the air. You are creating. Even if you have to cry, cry confessing the word of God. Hallelujah. You are not born again here. The first thing you are going to do is to create a glorious destiny. Please listen to me, everyone. You need to make it right with the Lord Jesus inside and outside. Or you've made a decision for Jesus once. But you found yourself derailing. There is love for you tonight. And we're welcoming you home. Wherever you are, you are, you are hearing the voice of the Lord. The Spirit of God is ministering to you. The Bible says, and in the day you hear His voice, you will in, He said, do not, uh, how did He say? In the day, do not harden your heart. As in the provocation in the wilderness. So right now I'm inviting you. Come and join our sister here. Appreciate them as they come, inside and outside. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Thank you, sister. I see you coming. I salute you. Come. 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 Don't remain. There are people 
inside and outside the lord is calling you to be born again and to make it right we'll give you a few seconds we're out of time don't stay back this is the beginning of a great journey hallelujah thank you so much look at me you are making the greatest decision in your life are you listening to me lift your hands up two of you and you pray this prayer seriously seriously you are not reciting a poem this is very prophetic say lord jesus i believe you died for me i confess that i'm a sinner unable to help myself but i believe that you died for me wash me with your precious blood i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that i'm a child of god holy spirit come and live in me make me your own i denounce sin and satan from today i have a colorful destiny in the name of jesus thank you so much for making this bold decision i want you to follow the ushers they will have your details and will follow you up god bless you hallelujah now you've been invited you're worshiping with us for the first time this is your first time of worshiping with us in koinonia we believe the lord brought you here we salute you thank you for coming please leave your seat and run out quickly we want to bless and speak a word of prophecy thank you my brother thank you koinonia appreciate them whatever you are grateful for multiplies in your life if we thank god for these people the lord will keep bringing more and more people inside and outside no matter how far you are find your way to the front we want to pray for you the lord brought you by his power he brought you to bless you he brought you to change you thank you very much for coming we salute you and we appreciate you thank you so so much hallelujah thank you so so much this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international thank you sirs thank you mars for coming i know that the lord brought you to change you to transform your life we assure you that you will never be the same again you will go back with a fresh hunger for spiritual things a fresh hunger for god the things that used to interest you will no longer interest you you will have a new passion and you begin to see the word of god produce results in your life in the name of jesus christ we want to bless you and pray for you saints of god stretch your hands towards them and prophesy we bless you in the name of jesus whatever challenge you came here with we declare that you walk free in the name of the lord jesus christ i rebuke everything that is not of god i pray by the power of the holy spirit that from today you will experience breakthrough you will experience intimacy a love and a passion for god i break you free from anything that keeps you in satan's camp in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you father thank you so much for coming we love you we celebrate you we really really dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline